Hello and welcome to another edition of Business Africa. I am Afolake Oyinloye. The top stories this week. Pineapple production in Benin bounces back after suspension. Burundi tea growers experience a boom in August. And Nigerian entrepreneur turns traditional meal into hot commodity. Sugarloaf and smooth cayenne are the two major varieties of pineapple grown in Bene Republic. But there's been some reports showing a high concentration of ethophon used to speed up the pineapple ripening process. To that effect, the cultivation ex and exportation were suspended in December 2016 until of recent. Let's have a look at the details with Stefan Cunye and Elvis Bo. Pineapple cultivators in Benin are now hopeful after a few months of uncertainty. The government has just resumed exportation of the fruit to Europe after discovering technology which helps in verifying the quality of fruits cultivated. The cultivation was suspended in December 2016 after inspections revealed a concentration of greater volumes of ethophon used to enhance the pineapple ripening process. Before exporting, some dealers add ethophon to enhance the ripening process. This dose is not controlled in Benin. Every exporter can use it the way he or she likes, and it has caused problems because it leaves stains on the pineapples. In order to achieve a more rigorous control of ready for export pineapples, Benin has adopted a state of the art technology which helps detect the safety of fruits meant for exportation. To better organize and enhance the Beninese pineapple label, Benin has injected hundreds of millions into the purchase and installation of equipment and the training of adequate personnel. So after that, they were able to install a system in a nuclear way. The new technology helps us to detect and limit the amount of harmful substance on the pineapples. So, it's a preliminary job that has to be done before the fruit is exported. Annual pineapple production in Benin is now estimated at more than 200,000 tons. Unlike the coffee sector in Burundi where privatization has failed, the tea sector is experiencing a boom. Quite a number of changes were brought into the sector since its privatization in 2011. Tea is Burundi's second largest source of art currency behind coffee and supports 300,000 farmers in a nation of 10 million people. The tea growers seem satisfied with the liberalization of tea sector. Selsh Kofi and Ignatius Arno with more. The Burundi Tea Office enjoyed a historic monopoly from 1971 until the arrival of Pothem, the first private tea-making company in 2011. At the request of its financial partners who were advocating the liberalization of agricultural sectors, Burundi liberalized its tea sector in 2007. Private investors took advantage of this opening to set up the first tea factory called Pothem. Despite this liberalization, challenges remain. These include respect for environmental and hygienic standards, as well as modernization of production facilities. We had just spent 18 years on a price of 40 Burundian francs. With the arrival of Protem, it gave us 200 Burundian francs per bag of green leaf, then 250 Burundian francs. We, the tea growers, today no longer grumble. When you want money to build a house, you just have to go to the microfinance established for tea growers and get a credit for it. And the payment is done in bits after the harvest. Burundi hopes to increase its annual production of dry tea, which is still below 15,000 tons far from Kenya, which accounts for one-fifth of the world's production with more than 300,000 tons per year. When we come back, William Bahia will be joining us on set to speak further on the challenges of agribusiness in Africa. Stay with us.